Yeah, I can see that. Okay, thanks, sir. Hello, guys. Uh, today, let's talk about colliders. I've already talked about colliders in the previous uh, talk series, uh, Introduction to Hydrogen Physics. In that, I have talked about uh, what happens before collision, what happens during collision, and what happens after collision. I've also talked about the detector components and uh, what are the detector components that are present in Atlas and CMS. In this talk, I will be covering about what I have missed in that video. Today, I will be talking about uh, Google Slider. Next. Today, I will be talking about the types of collision, main characteristics of a collider, particle combination in collision, and current development in the large hadron collider. So, let's start with uh, types of collision. Next, uh, types of collision. In particle physics, we distinguish two types of experimental setups. The first is a fixed target experiment. Fixed target experiments are nothing but uh, when we have two particles are colliding, nah, we keep one particle at rest and then make the other particle to accelerate uh, at uh, about the speed of light and they are my make to collide at the uh, fixed target one particle is at rest where the other particle is moving and they are made to uh, collide at the specific position in collision experiments both of the particles are also moving around the, the circle or uh, in the linear accelerator if both of the particles are moving and then they are made to collide at a specific place in the kinematics of a particle with mass m can be expressed by its momentum and energy which form a four vector whose square is uh, equals to the uh, mass square here we don't have to worry about the units because uh, here we are uh, seeing only the magnitude here uh, uh, this equation one is for particles for the one particle right now we in uh, colliders we normally collide two particles one particles how to collide you can only clap with two hands so we are colliding two particles now so we are taking here the center of mass energy while the particles are colliding both of the particles are traveling around the speed of light so their mass is relativistic so their velocity is relativistic in terms the momentum is also relativistic so what we do is we fix the point the mass and velocity can be relativistic but the point in the space is not relativistic so we calculate the mass from that point so only we are seeing that center of mass energy next fixed target experiment in equation 2 we had a term for p1 vector square plus p2 vector the whole square we had a term right here the term is getting cancelled because in fixed target experiments p1 vector is equal to minus p2 vector so the term is getting cancelled in the tabular column we can see that the center of mass energy in a experimental collision and the center of mass energy for the fixed target collision is very varying the collider experiments have a very much highest center of mass energy whereas the fixed target has some very it's not very low it's low particle low center of mass energy we may think that the center of mass energy of collider is very high so it only produces uh, good results or it is the superman of the collider but it's not because most of the particles in our present standard model all left out Quark, other than the top quark and uh, except neutrinos all have been discovered in fixed target experiments so fixed target experiment has yielded us more results next main characteristics of a collider the famous collider that have been built is a synchrotron 
uh, I'm talking about LFC here. I wished a colliding beams or accelerator and then kept a constant energy for several hours. The also uh, one of the main characters of a collider, which I didn't mention here, is the particles that are accelerated can only uh, one the part only charged particles can be accelerated. If there's no charge, then it can't be accelerated. In the case of a proton particle antiparticle collider, it is sufficient to construct a synchrotron with a single beam tube. Since the Lorentz force keeping the particle on a bent orbit changes sign with the cha uh, change of particle charge. Let's take electron and a positron. If they are placed under the electric and magnetic field of the collider, they move. They move around different in the opposite direction because they are oppositely charged. Right? So they move around in the opposite direction and they collide at a specific place. What we have to keep in mind is that we have to change the RF field and the RF field because we have to make sure that particle and antiparticle is colliding at the space where the detector is. If you are uh, accelerating both the particle and antiparticle collider uh, without the specific RF field, it will collide at any point. We need it to collide at the specific detector place. If the particles are of the same type, like in proton-proton collision in LHC, the accelerator have two beam types, which are made to intercept in the intersection region. Here, we must need two beams because they are both, uh, they are both uh, charged same. So they, if we have like a single beam tube, we are having two bunch beams. Both will go around the accelerator in the same side. We needed to uh, travel around the opposite direction to make them collide. So we are using two beams here. Uh, next. Linear or circular colliders. In the case of a linear collider, one uses two independent linear accelerator structures in order to accelerate the two beams and makes them collide in a central region. Uh, let's take our, our next uh, uh, electron and positron. And let's take electron on the left hand side and positron on the right hand side. We are making them to accelerate at around the light speed and then we are making them intersect at the center point and then we are colliding it there. It can, the linear accelerator can also be constructed in another way. Both the uh, uh, particles are, can be kept in one of the sides, like uh, take example left side and they are made to accelerate and they can be made uh, the, in the end we have a 180 degree arc so they can collide at that. We make the particles to turn by using a quadrupole magnet which I have talked about in the previous talk. Uh, this type of linear accelerators is only used for the creation of highest uh, particle masses like the particles which have masses above 100 giga electron volts. Next. In the case of the circular collider, maximum collision energy, in the case of the circular collider, the acceleration of the beams can be altered at any moment. When the when a proton enters the LHC large hadron collider, it is about 7,000 giga electron volts. Then they are kept at the same ring for several halves because the energy has to be given to the proton constantly to make the proton's energy go up to 14 tera electron volts. But in a linear collider, the beam has to pass in any case to the whole linear accelerator structure. It happens in within a second. The collision happens to say we can't make the beam say, stay in the linear accelerator. It happens when we turn on. So in linear accelerator, if you want to change the uh, energy, if you want to change the luminosity, it has to be done before starting the experiment. And also sometimes when if we want to increase the energy, uh, if you want to push the energy, like double the amount of uh, uh, what is planned for, we may need to change the whole experimental setup itself, the whole hardware itself. So uh, 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 circular colliders is mostly preferred. Next one. 
interaction rate this is a very important quality indicator of the collider because uh, it tells us the rate of particle interactions per unit time which is dr by dt this is characterized by a pro proportionality factor between the interaction rate and its cross section uh, interaction rate ns is equal to dr by dt which is equal to luminosity times into the cross section the luminosity the luminosity is a very interesting topic and it requires a separate talk uh, which i will be doing next the luminosity depends on the intensity of the accelerated beams on the frequency by which they collide and on so the density of the beams the standard unit unit for cross section the delta p is bonds bonds one bond is equal to 10 to the power minus 24 cm square next detector occupancy or pile the, the this has to be kept in mind for each and every collision because in the num, the detector occupancy is nothing but the number of interactions per beam crossing if the collider produces a too high occupancy the luminosity has to be lowered artificially and if the luminosity is lowered then the amount of data we get is low, lower uh, we can imagine the pile up uh, when the, uh, by comparing it to a ray, let's go to a ray. Uh, in there, there will be some laser light thingy which will be shooting different colors at us. Now, if, if you have one, two, or keep it in every corner, it will be good. But if we fill the whole ray with that laser thingy, the ray become illuminated. The ray is good when it is dark, but when it's illuminated, it's not good. And also, you can't focus on a single light. Because all of the lasers are shooting everywhere and you can't focus on this single light. The same thing happens in the collider. If too much, if the detector occupancy is too much, the luminosity automatically increases. We have to decrease the luminosity and also the detector can't uh, take one particle's measurement accurately because the whole data is messed up because there are too much interactions. So, what detector occupancy is always kept in a limit so that we can get uh, good data. Next, different particle combination for collision. There are different particle combination, and uh, I will talk about most of the one here. First, I will be talking about lepton collision. We know leptons are the lightest and stable members of the lepton family, or electrons and positrons. Electrons and positrons are the lightest. And they are con considered elementary because uh, in, if we take proton, we have a quark, down quark inside them. But when we take electrons, that's nothing. It is the most fundamental particle we can get hold of. This makes them ideal choice for collision because when we collide protons, there are a higher chance of forming secondary particles which we don't need for that particular experiment. But when we are colliding two electrons, or we are colliding electron and a positron, it always gives us a good result. It will, it is very interesting to look at. So next, proton-proton collision. Almost free of synchrotron energy, protons can be accelerated in a circular accelerator to energies in the multi-tera electron volt range. I have used uh, the word almost free of synchrotron radiation because we have already saw in the previous talk that the uh, for a proton traveling a tera electron volt range, the synchrotron radiation that it gives is only around a kilowatt. So it's not very much of a big deal. And synchrotron the about synchrotron radiation I also talked about in the previous talk. To be to put it in a simple words, synchrotron radiation is uh, what makes the accelerate colliders the potential to get low when particle is moving around a circular orbit in high energy it gives off photon as radiation it gives off excited photons which in turn lowers the energy of the traveling particle and also proton anti proton colliders have also been built but due to the difficulties in getting large stack of dense antiproton beams these designs has been uh, not successful mm -hmm. making the pro antiproton is not uh, 
when considered with collecting the anti proton it is not very much of the big when we collide two ions or when we collide two heavier particles there is a higher chance of forming anti protons but the anti protons are formed but how do we collect it it is a very huge deal and also the uh, anti proton can be stored with the uh, with a pod with uh, electric and magnetic field and they are kept at rest using lasers uh, but collecting the anti proton is way much difficult and to provide considerable luminosity for proton and anti proton colliders it is not very good so we are always choosing proton proton collider but protons are not elementary particles like i said they have up to a quarks one down quarks they have its limitation most of these proton proton creation only create secondary form fragments which are of less interest to study when we are colliding electrons we always have something new coming up but since lhc has been operating the data we get has stacked up with the more secondary fragments we have found out but it keeps on repeating well, the chance of finding a new particle is getting lower so next proton proton versus lepton collision a very significant difference between the proton proton collision and the electron positron collision is the high total cross section of proton proton collision at 30 tera electron volts or maybe at 14 tera electron volts the center of mass energy the cross section is about 100 millibond the 100 millibond but when we take electron positron collisions the proton proton collision is about 10 to the power 5 times 10 to the power 5 times higher than the electron positron collisions so proton proton collisions yields us more luminosity and from that we can get more data to study so only proton proton is preferred uh, in the lhc next other types of colliders ion colliders i have talked about ion colliders when talking about producing anti protons right the main research objectivity here is to study the high particle densities ion consists of many protons and neutrons and have a very complex inner structure so during an ion ion interaction there is a very if we want to study the secondary particles if we want to study the particles with one or more two or more quarks we we generally use ion ion interaction ion ion collide uh, lhc has also used ion for their collision apart from proton uh, proton hadron colliders this is very interesting because uh, this gives the what the strong force the uh, fundamental force of nature we can see it here in the hadron colliders uh, let's take electron and proton collisions the point like electrons acts as a tiny probe that scans the inside of the proton and reveals its inner structure what i am trying to say is nothing but take billiards for example the white ball is the electron whereas the other balls kept in triangle shape is the uh, proton when this elect that white ball strikes that structure that triangle structure is getting scattered all the particles are going in different direction with different velocities at different trajectory if we analyze the trajectory velocity of the scattering particles we can study the inner working of the proton itself so it is like same here also the electron scatters the uh, quarks and gluons inside the protons from that we can see the inner the insight can be obtained about the inner structure of the proton so yeah, hadron colliders are very much interesting next la uh, yeah crazy one of the in front photon photon collider i have told in the first uh, during the main characteristics of the collider only charged particles can be accelerated in an accelerator but photons are neutral particles how they can be accelerated like shining two torches at each other that is not a photon photon collision it just passes over it but 
I told that synchrotron radiation lowers the potential of the uh, large hadron collider, but synchrotron radiation also helps because when uh, excited photon is released by the uh, protons which are traveling in the high speed, these excited photons breaks into W bosons, and these W bosons are one of the fundamental particles that can be only produced in these type of moments. There is a separate detector uh, apart from Atlas Emma, that is a separate detector known as POTEM totem that studies this W bosons from the synchrotron radiation. If there is no synchrotron radiation, we can't study W bosons this much easily. Uh, Wakefield accelerator. All accelerators that I have described so far use conventional RF cavities. Uh, I have talked about RF in the previous talk. RF, the radio frequency, gives the proton bunches this uh, shape, and also it is what allows the, uh, the proton bunch to travel in high speed. But using Wakefield gives us many more advantages. Wakefield is nothing but uh, take uh, it is sub. Uh, wait, I will explain. Take plasma. Plasma is the fluid of highly energized charged particles, right? When we place this plasma in an external electric field, the very strong external electric field, the electrons from the plasma are ripped out and we have a small perturbation formed here. This when we keep an electron or positron in this small space, it gets accelerated very fast. So, uh, e, let's take uh, the large Hadron Collider is around 21 kilometer, uh, the circumference is around 21 kilometer. But when, if the uh, uh, LHC has used Wakefield, it will be around, the same result can be achieved with around 14 kilometers itself. But using Wakefield is a very new idea and also it requires many R&D. So, since many years people try to use Wakefield in plasma for the acceleration of electrons and positrons, the Wakefield and the proton acceleration has not been studied yet, and we will see about it in later talks. Next, uh, new developments in large hadron collider. Uh, the main detector components from Atlas and CMS I have talked about in the previous talk, so I will just concentrate on the new developments in LHC. Totem, total elastic and diffractive cross-section measurement. From the name itself, we can see that it calculates the elastic, it uh, observes the elastic collision and also the cross-section. We know that uh, uh, cross-section of a proton-proton collision is around 100 millibar. How do we know that it's around 100 millibar? It's from this uh, uh, totem detector. The primary instrument of the detector is referred to as Roman Pa uh, because the sheets of the detectors, uh, it is a sheet that is kept in a cylinder around a heavy solenoid field. This shield measures the trajectory of the particle and gives us the uh, characteristics of it. Uh, now let's talk about model. It is a monopole and exotic detectors of the LHC. This is very interesting. And from the name itself, we can see that its primary goal is to directly search for the magnetic monopole or dion. Dions are particles with a single pole and other highly ionizing stable massive particles and pseudo stable massive particles. Then how do we study this ionizing stable massive particles? we need some type of equipment, right? For this, we use nuclear track detectors. Nuclear track detectors are materials which suffer high damage due to highly ionizing particles. They receive damage. From that damage, we study their characteristics. Nuclear uh, track detectors are nothing but uh, a material. When the material is exposed to very high radiation, it uh, the, the property changes 
when that material are exposed to high radiation is uh, when it's coming to contact with ionizing particle the material is etched the material is etched like a chemical etching the material is etched and from the damage we study their characteristics of the particles next the final slide and also the most interesting slide it's the phaser this year's absolute blessing phase forward search experiment it is designed to both search for new light and weakly coupled elementary particles and to study the high energy neutrinos we know uh, uh, let's start we know the cms and atlas detectors are arranged like onion ring the particles are colliding perpendicular to the direction of collision only the atlas and cms have been arranged what about the particle interactions parallel to the direction of the collision for that we are using phaser let's take two chalk pieces hold them each in one hand then smash them the bigger chunks will travel perpendicular to the direction of collision whereas the less mass particle will travel towards parallel to the direction of collision but we have no way to place the detector parallel to the direction of collision because the beam has to come in and go out right so we can't place it there so this phaser this phaser is located at around 480 meters away from the atlas there's all already a service tunnel that the service tunnel is is been converted to the phaser and this phaser experiment is expected to look at the low mass particle and the stable particles it we may think that 5 480 meters that 500 meter is too high but it's not because we are talking about the particles that move in light speed in uh, for light speed 480 meter is not at a very big distance. it's just a very small tripping and also this phase is shielded by rock and concrete of about 100 meters so there is no background radiation involved so we need stable and less massive particles so the phase gets less and uh, less massive and less massive particles so that's all for the lecture if you have any questions you can ask